Minister, let me be clear that politicians earn their keep during times of crisis. Now, the coronavirus pandemic has put a laser-like focus on the performance of our political leaders. And some have shone brightly, others not so much. As regular viewers will know, I think Daniel Andrews in Victoria has been a standout as the politician who has handled this crisis the worst of any leader. His inability to pivot, to readjust his thinking as the crisis unfolded, as the country flattened the curve, has irreparably harmed Victoria's economy. His health response, pretty good. His economic response, terrible. But among the worst decisions for many political leader during this crisis has been Tasmania's decision to go it alone on racing and ban the industry from reopening until June 13. Now, Premier Peter Gutman gets the gold star for the worst decision of the crisis. Let's not forget, racing in Tasmania has not been operational for eight weeks. It's the only state or territory that imposed a total ban on thoroughbreds, harness and greyhounds. Now, one of the great success stories of the pandemic has been the ability of racing, all three codes, to continue subject to strict and stringent safety and social distancing protocols. Participants are being temperature tested on track. Zonal systems have been set up so that train trainers don't have to travel too far. And of course, there are no spectators. And of course, wagering turnover, particularly on the corporates, has skyrocketed as Aussies clamour for some much needed entertainment, especially on weekends. Not so in Tasmania, which only last week extended that's right, it extended its racing ban by five weeks to June 13, despite the industry saying it's on its knees. The Premier must be roundly condemned for this ham-fisted overreach. The Tasmanian racing industry employs thousands of people. They have essentially, needlessly, put their lives on hold during this ban. And just when they thought they'd be back on track, Gutwin pulls the rug again, saying the start date is now June 13. Owners, justifiably outraged. Prominent owner Joe O'Neill, this is what he said. I can't get my head around it. I'll be moving all my horses, except the babies, out of Tasmania straight away. Why would I support Tasmanian racing? The government has just buried your racing industry. The same for greyhound owners. Many have sent their dogs back into state, never to return. Now, in my many years of involvement in racing, it's clear to me that most politicians, including ministers, don't understand the racing industry. They wouldn't have a clue. Some of them don't even know what a fluctuation is. And because they don't understand it, they then rely on their uh, overzealous bureaucrats who've got little idea themselves. Now, in this instance, recommendations that are totally out of kilter with the rest of the country have been blindly accepted by a government that's got no interest in doing the right thing by the industry. No idea, actually. It's wrong and it's wholly inappropriate when thousands of people are relying on the industry for their livelihoods. It's also mind-numbingly dumb and stupid to alienate an industry that could be up and running, they're ready to go, like the rest of Australia, at a time when just about every other industry is on its knees. Talk about look a gift horse in the mouth. Now, I'll bet London to a brick on this madness will cost Gutwin votes at the next election, and so it should. Punters and industry participants have long memories, and it's clear Tasmanian racing participants have been treated appallingly. They've been treated like mugs, and they deserve better.